In all seriousness, your job when you're representing a buyer is to help them get the home they want. Now, you can't make the choice for them as to whether you're going to use an escalation clause. They just need to know that it's a, a possibility. If it's a possibility in your state, again, you go back to your broker. Is this a possibility? How does it work? Communicate it to your client. Sit down and discuss with them the likely scenarios, how things could happen, and see if it's something they want to do. I know many, many, many agents are employing escalation clauses in their contracts to help their buyer win in a world where so many clients are not getting the home that they want because there's too many offers. Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm John Darden, and this is the Elite Realtor Experience, a podcast dedicated to agents ready to take the next step in becoming elite. Let's talk about escalation offers today. I know many of you are employing the tactic of an escalation offer, but should you be? And is it setting up your buyer to vastly overpay for the home? What is an escalation offer? If I'm not using it, should I be using this tactic? So let's rewind and first let me define as best as I can what an escalation offer is. And I'll do that by giving an example. Let's say a home is listed for $250,000 and you put in an offer of 265 dollars with a clause attached to it that the price offered will escalate $2,500 above the highest offer that the seller receives not to exceed 280. So in this same instance, the home is listed at 250. You write an offer of 265. Somebody else puts in an offer of 270, but you have an escalation clause, which then immediately makes your offer 272 five, $2,500 over the highest bid. That is an escalation offer. Your sales price offer as the buyer escalates X amount based on the highest offer that the seller receives. Because end of the day, pretty much every listing that's worth anything is going multiple offers well over asking price. And most of you are losing out offer after offer after offer after offer after offer. So some of you have decided to employ the tactic of an escalation offer. Let me give you my opinion, and and well, actually first, let me just say right here, first and foremost, the first thing you need to do, if you're thinking about making escalation offers part of your tactic, is you need to discuss this with your broker first. I'm not your broker, okay? I can't give you legal advice on your contract in your local market in your state. Everything is different state to state to state, right? And, and so you cannot look to me for your legal advice on contracts. I need to state that very clearly. Yes, I am in the business. Yes, I own a brokerage. Yes, what I say goes inside of my brokerage, but I am not that person for you. So you need to discuss this with your broker before you begin to employ this because some states will not allow you to use escalation offers when you're representing a buyer. And if they do, then there's certain wording that has to be part of it. So the first thing you need to do if you're interested in using escalation offers, and maybe this is the first time you've ever even heard of this, don't go make this part of your next buyer offer until you have talked to your broker first to find out the legality of it. Are there certain addenda that has to be attached to it if there's an escalation, uh, which some states have got. Some states are quickly trying to roll out addenda for escalation offers because this is becoming a growing trend. Talk to your broker first. Here's my opinion. And I'm going to play devil's advocate on both sides here. For the buyer, pros and cons. Clearly, the pros are you, you have a greater opportunity to be the winning offer if you, you put in an escalation clause. And again, back to the example, the home is listed at 250. You submit an offer of 265, so already 15 grand over asking price, with an escalation of $2,500 over the highest bid up to 280, for instance. You, you are positioning your buyer to win, win the home. And at this point, it's, it is a win or lose, right? Like that's just the way we gotta look at it. Your buyer wins the home, yay. 
Escalation offers typically are going to win over any other offers. Now, what happens if there are multiple escalation offers? Oy vey. Again, talk to your broker. I, I, I know what I would do inside of my brokerage, but that is, is going to be very irrelevant for you. So if there are multiple escalations involved in a contract or in, in a bidding war here, then talk to your broker. And that is not me. But let's pretend like there's not multiple escalations. It's just you. You're setting your buyer up to win the home. You're also setting your buyer up to grossly overpay for a home. And for many people, that's just the reality right now. So you need to sit back and you need to have the conversation with your buyer going back to the buyer interview. Hey, here's one of the tactics that we can employ. Uh, I can almost assure you're going to get the home, but there's a strong chance that it it is not going to appraise and pretty much nothing is appraising right now. We just know that that's a reality. And so we have to work within that. But we're, we're putting our buyer in a position where they're going to have to come up with even more money out of pocket. Now let's, let's play that 250 scenario, $250,000 home list price. You put in a 265 offer with an escalation, $2,500 over the highest bid up to 280. Well, let's say the highest offer was 275 and you win at 277 five because $2,500 over the highest offer, which was 275. That $250,000 home is now $277,500. And let's say it appraises at two forty-five. dollars That's a pickle. That's a problem, right? Uh, does your buyer have $30,000, $32,000 out of pocket to pay over uh, the appraised price? Because again, lenders can't lend money over the appraised price. That has to come out of pocket in the form of cash. Does your buyer have that? Ugh, that's tough. So on, on the positive side, we're setting up our buyer to probably get the home. But on the negative side, we're probably setting our buyer up to have to come up with even more money out of pocket. Now, as long as your buyer is aware of that and knows that and agrees to that, and that's what they want to do, your fiduciary responsibility to your client is to get them the home and get them what they want but it's also your responsibility to make sure that your client understands here's what could possibly happen. Do you have the money on hand to be able to handle this? Now, the the devil's advocate sort of like snarky realtor inside of me goes to the immediate thought of, well, what if the listing agent is lying about what the highest bid was? So let's use the $250,000 home example again. Home uh, list price two hundred fifty thousand dollars. We put in a contract of two sixty five with an escalation of twenty five hundred dollars over the highest bid. And let's say the listing agent comes back and says, "Yeah, we have an offer for two seventy seven five. You won at two eighty. How can you know for certain that there actually was?" an offer for 2775 knowing that in most states it is illegal for the listing agent to show the buyer agent other contracts so what's to keep these listing agents that are just dominating real estate right now from absolutely lying through their teeth and telling you yeah i got a 2775 offer but really they didn't. What if you were the only offer? Ooh, this is tough. This is tough. And this is where you got to go back to your broker because I can't advise you on this. Everything is different state to state. And again, there's some states that have an addenda to deal with this. Texas, Trek, if you're listening to me, please catch up. We, we need a form for this really, really bad right now. We need you to do something because... This actually is a problem. And again, it is a risk that you're going to have to take, which is why the whole point of this this conversation, this podcast today is, should you utilize escalation offers as part of a strategy for you to represent your buyer to get the home? You're going to have to make that decision. You're going to have to weigh the risks and you're going to have to communicate and present those risks to your buyer who ultimately makes the decision. And you don't make the decision for your client. That's not your job. Your client is the one that has to say, yay or nay, I'm willing to do this. But you've got to, to present all of the potential problems here. Now, 
man, uh, I, 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 the the teacher in me really wants to just say exactly what I would do if I was representing a buyer with an escalation offer, and I was worried about uh, the listing agent lying. But I, but also the the fiduciary in me knows that I probably shouldn't because you should be asking your broker. So let me just again iterate. You need to ask your broker, but what the hell, if it was me, I I would probably ask for proof. Uh, I would. And knowing that most states don't have an addenda yet to deal with this, I would want to see some proof. Can you show me the contract that was 277.5? I want to see it. And maybe you make that part of the contingency in the contract. And and again, this is a state to state thing. In Texas, that's kind of tough because we as as realtors, we cannot really add legal wording to a contract uh, because we're not attorneys. Only an attorney can add legal wording. So maybe you get an attorney involved to to make that part of it as well. There's all kinds of different ways that you can go uh, when it comes to an escalation clause. So just continuing that down, if I'm writing up uh, a in, in a perfect world, Texas Real Estate Commission is listening to me. Maybe, I don't know. So let Trek, if you're listening, here's what I would do. I would type up the offer, but but I would have an attorney create their own form, their own addenda that we attach to the contract with the escalation, requiring that the listing agent provide us proof of what the highest offer was. I would not do that. I would have an attorney do that. Wink. But that's really what I would do, Trek, if you're listening. Um, again, go back to your broker, go back to your sales managers, go back to your trainers, see what they would advise you to do and what your state requires that you do in something like this. This is not a new thing. I have used escalation offers in the past. The first time I used an escalation offer was either late 2009, early 2010. I can't remember the exact date, but it was right when the first time home buyer tax credit was ending. For those of you that have been in the business long enough, you remember the first time home buyer tax credit. The government would give up to $8,000 to a first time home buyer as a grant. It was just money. If you bought a home and all you had to do was live there for three years. And if you live there for three years, you didn't have to pay it back. That was eight grand that you got to put in your bank account. That was back when the market was awful, when homes were not selling, but they pumped this first time home buyer tax credit into the market. And so all of a sudden, those first-time home buyer price ranges were just overwhelmed with buyers. And it was similar to how it is today in those price ranges. Now, the difference today is that every price range seems to be overwhelmed with buyers. Back then, it was just the first-time home buyers. So I utilized an escalation clause for one of my clients. And it was tricky. It was kind of unheard of at the time. And, and the hard part was the other agent did not understand what I was doing. And so I had to explain and over explain and re explain and then talk to that person's broker about how this worked and what I was doing and how it wasn't shady, but uh, that this was an actual thing that we're trying to, we will escalate the contract X amount based on the highest offer. I'm not going to lie, it was a pain in the butt. And I know many of you are dealing with that right now where you're submitting escalation offers to listing agents that have no clue what this is and they just don't get it. But this is a tactic that I know many of you are employing to help represent your buyers. And at the end of the day, our fiduciary responsibility is to help our client get what they want. I've used that F word a lot today, fiduciary. It makes me feel, makes me feel very intelligent to use that word. Um, but but again, like real, literally, realistically, in all seriousness, your job when you're representing a buyer is to help them get the home they want. Now, you can't make the choice for them as to whether you're going to use an escalation clause. They just need to know that it's a, a possibility. If it's a possibility in your state, again, go back to your broker. Is this a possibility? How does it work? Communicate it to your client. Sit down and discuss with them the likely scenarios, how things could happen, and see if it's something they want to do. I know many, many, many agents are employing escalation clauses in their contracts to help their buyer win in a world where so many clients are not getting the home that they want because there's too many offers. If you've been listening today and there's been a lot of uh, uh, like pounding on the desk, I'm sorry. For some reason, I've been really passionate about this today. So there might be a lot of thuds 
Maybe Bailey can edit them out. I don't know. We'll see. Escalation clauses. Should you use them? And if so, are you using them legally? Are you using them ethically? And are you using them to represent your client to help them get the home that they want so they're no longer losing out on multiple offer situations? See you on the next one.